Hi guys, so welcome to the video. This one's going to be just flicking through the EasySync dashboards just so you're a little bit more familiar with it. So uh, to start with, we're going to go to a live account um, just because your accounts at the moment obviously we're going to be blank because you haven't any any sales. Yeah, um, so this, this account is actually started uh, in April 2018. So um, it's been going for about almost eight months now. Uh, as you can see, we're going to start off by just looking at the dashboard. So let's look at um, active listings. So you can see where it says today. It says 104,000 active listings, and that is correct. That's 104,049 listings that's actually active at the moment. Now, the dashboard doesn't just show today's stats. You can actually give you a snapshot of the last seven days, the last 30 days, and the last 90 days. So it gives you an idea, like a summary, of sort of how you've been doing for the past so many days. So it, what this is good for is just when you log in, it gives you a nice overview of how your account's doing. So you can kind of have a point of reference and you can kind of see, check the performance so you know sort of how you're doing. As we're moving down, the next one's called unknown listings underneath active listings. On there, it's actually listings that eSync can't actually pick up and link to them. Now, as you can see on my dashboard, not many of these happen. So in the last 90 days, there's only six. And for some reason, every now and again, when we list, there's some unknown listings that eSync just disconnects from. All you need to do is remove them. Uh, next down is out of stock. Now, this one is actually quite a big one. Um, you can see that today I haven't actually got many, 22, and then seven days, 714, and so on. Now, this builds up really quickly, doesn't it, Matt? Yeah, this, especially with big accounts. Yeah, yeah this, yeah, this this can really build up. So if I didn't actually monitor my out of stock, and this is something we, we are going to go over, um, this could go into the thousands, especially on a 104,000 account. We're looking at, you know, 20,000 sort of out of stock. And that's just because they go out of stock on Amazon. And because eSync links up and monitors the stock, it'll show on eSync so then we know which items are actually out of stock. Now, we are being charged for these out of stock items so by eSync. Um, so what we want to do is kind of keep it lean. So we like to remove the out of stock items and make sure the account's always got active listings um, that so we're not paying for any sort of any dead weight, really. Yes, definitely. I mean, a couple of the uh, people that we have coached, when we look at their dashboards, more often than not, do they have a lot of listings out of stock and they're wondering why their easy sync bill is so high. They don't seem to realize that the listings out of stock, they are actually being charged for yeah. by easy sync. Yeah, so yeah. Do, do keep up to date with it. Exactly right. And the next two, I'd say the most exciting ones are orders and profit. So as you can see today, there's been 28 orders. And if you look at the last seven days, it's been 311. And this is just every order that goes through eSync. Now, and if you had multiple items so in stock on a listing, then one order, if there's two sales, it still counts as one order because they went through on one order. But that's why underneath there's profit. So as you can see, there's 28 orders. But of those, that's £229 profit. That is before the shop fee and your eSync listing fee. But it still gives you an idea, because and we can show you exactly um, how to calculate what how much you need to be, be able to earn to break even. And I know that on this shop, that it's definitely well over break even. Break even point on this one is about seventy pounds. So everything else on top is profit. So it gives me a real. I mean, this is my favourite figure, isn't it? I mean, the profit, you know, because you know where you're at. Um, it gives me a really good idea of where I'm at today, where I've been, where I've been in the last seven days, and it kind of like lets me know if I'm growing or not. Because if that 30 day and that 90 day figure start to match up, I know that I have continued growth. If I know that they're going in the right direction, if they're getting higher and higher. So again, orders and profit is something that you're always going to be gravitate towards. You know, it gives you a really good idea of how well you're doing or where you need to improve as well. Um, the last one, I'm actually going to let Matt explain this one because this one is actually something that he sort of works on a bit more. Um, it gives you sort of an average of uh, your you sell, sell through rate. Yeah, so. definitely. So th this one, guys, at the bottom here is SCR. That stands for uh, sales conversion rate. Now, as you can see, the sales conversion rate on here is really, really low. But the, that's actually a pretty good, that's, a, that's an average is uh, is the three on the end of all those noughts. That is probably what you want to be hitting. The reason being is because we're bulk listers. This is what our module is. You know, that's how many listings he's got. That's his sales conversion rate for them for today. Um, now that that's that's pretty good. He's had twenty eight orders out of ten thousand. But look at his profits. Look at his conversion rate, and you'll you'll work out what your average is. So if his average is like if that was a five rather than a three, I know already he's making profit. Yeah, yeah. You know, so a three means I know he's making good profit. To be honest with you, 
if that's a one, maybe a two, that's when you sort of alarm bells, not necessarily ringing, but you're not making as much as, as you could be. Yeah. And um, especially if there's another zero in front of that as well, which can on the very rare occasion happen. Yeah, yeah. So it's again, another good indicator of how you're doing on sort of average. So you know where you, where you go, where you're heading. If it's if it's getting higher, that number, you know you're doing the right thing. If it starts getting lower and you have a little bit of a dip, you just know you need to take some action to, to put, put, put that, get those figures back up again. Definitely. And as we can see, overall, on his last 38, 30 days and even seven days, it's at 3 8, which means it's pretty much at four. So he's, we know he's well on track. Yeah. And that number, that the number you see, the 0. 0.003 um, at the moment today, can actually can change. And because at the moment we're getting some good sales for the time of the day, right now it's 7 30 p.m. We know that the sales, it's a good time for sales right now. It's sort of the hot spot period, isn't it? So that will probably go up a little bit more. Um, okay, so we're moving down onto the graphs. Matt's just going to go over these, actually, because I know that uh, you like to use these, these graphs quite a lot because, again, yeah. they're great indicators how, how we're doing. Yeah, I use the graphs a lot. They are pretty much the same as, um, as up here. They're just, uh, you can look at them from a day-by-day -day basis. So looking at this one, this indicates the amount of listings that you have um, in store. That's on the left-hand side. And then at the bottom is just your timeline. So if I come by up to today... He's got 104,000 uh, listings on on store and only 24 out of stock. Yesterday, he had 104,000 um, on store and 1,000 out of stock and so on and so forth. You can see how it changes. And you can see when he's been listing. So, for example, over the past two days, he went from 89,000 to 106,000. So you can see that's where he's been listing um, and keeping on top of his accounts. As I scroll down, there's another graph. This is a bit more of an interesting graph. Graph on the side here determines your turnover, the amount of monetary, and then once again, your time frame. So if you look at it, especially recently within the last month, yeah. his revenue has absolutely skyrocketed. It's sort of like the sort of late into Q4. You know, we've, yeah. it's really picked up, hasn't it? It's skyrocketed. I also know that you've on the done... Moon. You change your profit margins, which also I know that these that are a actually day. a better. <laughs> Look at those days. Yeah, <laughs> but this means I know that these are a better sales conversion rate as well yeah. as being better revenue anyway. So here as well as I'm hovering over, you're you're seeing a lot of numbers. Um, just take this one for example, the two thousand two hundred and eighty, the top one there, that is his revenue. The 442 underneath that, that is his profit. They are the main two that I look at. I also believe that the 56 is his uh, the orders that he had on that day. I'm just going to double check that. You can check at the bottom here. Um, these tell you all exactly uh, what one is for what. So as you can see, the profit is the blue line. The conversion is the yellow line. Orders the green line. So on and so forth. So... That's that's it for the main sort of dashboard, really. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good tool to use. Yeah, definitely. Um, moving on to theirs, I guess we want to talk about these these ones as well. Yeah, yeah. So are we going on to listings now, are we? Uh, create, well, with the create listings, guys, we'll just show it to you quickly. Yeah. I mean, this is just simply where you upload your listings from Amazon. Yeah. Um, we are doing a separate video with our listing Yeah, um, we'll go tips and more tricks. in depth from this one, but that's the, the create listing tab. So that's where we're going to put all the, uh, when we scrape all the, all the information, all the data, all the, uh, all the item numbers, we put them straight into this tool. But again, we'll go over, over that in another video. Okay, so this is the listings. Um, so you don't see anything on this one. We could even pop onto mine if you want to see, see some listings. Um, and this is actually all the listings that you've actually listed from Amazon. So this will show all of them if you really wanted to. You've got filters at the top. So you can see the listings on the left side. It says source product. So that's where it's the sources. So from Amazon. So if you clicked on one of those, it actually take you straight to Amazon. And then the listing itself, where it says eBay, that is actually my listing on the eBay account. And then next it will say the price. And then it'll tell us the profit if we sold it at that price, the quantity, and then when it was added. Now we generally on listings, or there's, sorry, there's last sale and there's quantity sold as well. So last sale, that actually put a little date in there. Um, you can actually use these as filters as well. So if, Matt, if you click on last sale, yep. and then it, what it'll do is it'll just change. So these are ones that haven't sold in a long time. So we click it again. And then these are the ones that I have. And so you can see there's ones, there's one that sold it 20 minutes ago. Uh, I sold a pin, was it a cushion? A oh, sewing box. 
There you go. And then before that was a hockey glove. So you, you can see it gets quite random with the sales. And um, that, that's just that's bulk listing method as well. We're pretty blase with what we sell. But we don't really know because we list so much. Um, yeah, so. yeah. Blase in the sense that we, you know, if someone, someone, you, you asked us what exactly you sell, it's like I can tell you the categories, but I can tell you the exact time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we have to, again, it's all it's all um, better in numbers. You know, the, the more we have, uh, the, the more sales are more likely to get as well. Um, so this is the list screen. What we'll often use with this as well. If you see in the top right, there's actually a search box. Now, the search box is good for actually trying to like remove listings or just trying to locate an exact listing. And you can literally put, yeah, hopefully there's none. It is searching. Yeah. So, for example, guys, we know knives are a big no-no on eBay, but they are accepted on Amazon. He's putting me under loads of pressure now. <laughs> it's, it's still loading. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, if it's a loading screen, it's probably because it can't find any. So. That, that, hopefully... Yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. What we got? A sport. Oh, we got a spork knife. That might be allowed. Spork knife. I think that's that you, okay. I think as well. that's all right. So if it's cutlery or anything to the kitchen, you're actually okay unless it's a you know certain yeah. knife. But there's a most most knives are banned on eBay, just like Matt was saying, but are fine on Amazon. So we have to combat that. But that's why we put the word knife and all the variations we can think of on the uh, on the Vera list, the list that we showed you. Um, so you can see. Back to just using the search box. So the search box is really handy if we're removing listings. So if we get a Vero violations on eBay or anything like that, we're asked to remove something or change something, we can find it quickly here. And we'll lastly just go on to tags. Um, tags is actually something that's added when you list a batch. You can have your own tag names or it gives it allocates one. Like, for example, Holy Water or Young Heart. Very random, but Easing allocates it to every uh, batch that you'll list. So tags is something that we can go over another time because um, I do actually like to call my own batches my own names. So it's easy for me to find those and categorize uh, the listings that I actually put on the uh, on eSync. So we'll move on now to orders. This one's a really good page as well. Love this page. So this actually shows us the orders that uh, have actually come through on the account. And as you can see, we'll, I won't only go over this quickly so you guys will understand this um, when you actually start to get the orders through. On the left side, it just says the date, the time, the actual order number of it, the um, which what sell order number it is, so how many orders of this has been 6,561 orders on this account so far, the eBay listing, how much they paid, the price, where the account it's come from, and the total. So that's the total, sorry, the total there is actually the price that was paid on Amazon. And then the profit, so that's the good one we like to look at, it gives you an indication of how much you made on that item. I think that's what we need to talk about that really, isn't it? And there's notes yeah. on the right as well. So sometimes we write notes, so if it's out of stock, if you just scroll down a little bit, there'll be one. Yeah, see that OOS means it's out of stock. I just know I need to deal with that. Um, and we, we've actually got to the stage now where we put those notes for our VA to then come and deal with. But yeah. start with guys, it's just it's just handy um, to, to know. But we like the orders page. <laughs> yeah, we do. And then finally, probably reports. The main thing we want to cover with reports is all sorts. Definitely feel free to uh, flick through these and sort of educate um, and go through them. But the main one that we use is poor performers. Yeah. Okay, so poor performers. Uh, what's good about poor performers is it actually instantly filters the oldest items, so the ones you've listed the uh, longest time ago and that haven't had a sale. So as you can see on here, I listed, I see on ad, uh, ad day ago, that actually is when I add the uh, item. So you can see it's a 69 days for this whole, probably entire list. And then afterwards you can see the other arrow says last sale. So because of those two together, it actually filters it. So the oldest uh, item that hasn't sold is, it comes up first. Now the way we use this, and I'll just quickly go over it, but again, there's something we'll go over in another video, is anything that's older than 60 days, I will remove it. I'll do that about once a week. I'll remove everything up to about the 59th day. So yeah, we could even show it now. You click, uh, you click that arrow to uh, select them all, yep. and then click delist, and then click OK. And you can do this just page after page. You can actually have, I think, about 100 on each page. You can delist at the same time. And we just keep going to the 60 days. And then what, what we'll do then is then we can, it allows us to have more space to be able to list new items, which boosts and creates more sales. Again, we're going to this more in depth about how on listing the, on, effects your on account. The listing lecture, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we wanted to just show you this. This is really great because you can see which items aren't performing. So we can really like keep your account nice and lean. 
Um, I know a lot of people who might use eSync, they don't necessarily use their poor performance. They just leave items to let them dwindle. But the problem is you're paying for something that's not selling. And eBay tends to ignore items that are older than 90 days, but we like to make it 60 days. Keep it optimized. Yeah. Um, right, that's it, guys, really. And any, you know, anything else, just got, sort of go through the dashboard. One other real quick thing I wanted to cover on with EasySync is, I think we mentioned it in the first video, but this is a very helpful uh, uh, chat system as well. If you ever have any problems with EasySync, yeah. if you ever have any questions about EasySync, you can contact them directly, okay? Yep, yeah, it's nice and easy. Just and type your message, press enter, and then they'll get back to you in a certain amount of time. Uh, and that's their bot talking, so we're going to ignore <laughs> they that. They will try and throw articles at you as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.